This is Deliverance Ministry.fm video cast number 21. everyone and welcome to another episode of deliverance ministry.fm where we give you proven insights about the demonic realm and deliverance ministry so you can wage spiritual warfare more effectively once again this is dr don ibbotson and i'm here with my colleague and co-host dr phyllis tarbox welcome phyllis hey great to be here don thanks for having me well it is good and we just want to welcome you again we've We'll appreciate, appreciate all the comments we're getting and suggestions for topics, and we'll probably uh, mention those again right at the end. And uh, But um, we do appreciate the interest that this podcast is drawing, and uh, we want to keep coming up with good topics for you. And we hope you're going to enjoy the one today. It's a question that we hear frequently um, when people come in mm-hmm. to the counseling center, and some and it goes something along like this. It's like, how, do I need deliverance? How do I know? Um, if I need deliverance, do you think I need deliverance? And so we want to address that question. And many times people ask it in context of somebody else and one of their family (laughs) members, you know, that they think, do they need deliverance? So that's the topic today. And uh, I want to encourage you to listen to the end because we're going to tell you again about our opportunity to get a, a free copy, a download of our Deliverance Ministry Plain and Simple Manual. And we also want to introduce a brand new resource that we have on our website, on our Counseling Academy website. It's totally free, so we'll talk about that at the end um, as well. So I, I guess, Phyllis, to start it off, you know, as people understand, we're a counseling center and a deliverance ministry. Right. And that's how people find us. That's and, true. And so many times people, uh, by the time they found us, they have looked for help elsewhere. Sometimes we're not the first stop. Yeah, usually, usually we're the last stop. You know, I get that. I just said that to a client a little while ago. It's like, this is your last pit stop when people have tried everything else and then they'll try deliverance. Yeah. Well, and they come for counseling, and many times they've tried other things too, right? Like mm-hmm. just reading on their own or going to the pastor and prayer at the altar and um, a lot of reading the Bible, books, yeah. self-help books. And, and sometimes, you know, the whole question of deliverance, whether uh, they've read about it or found us or somebody's referred them here. So we want to focus on that topic today, as I talked about. And once again, we're not going to try to copy or uh, cover everything again here. We've had other podcasts talking about um, deliverance, what it is, and quite simply, deliverance is the casting out of demons, driving them out. It is. That's it's that simple. It's um, there's a, we talk about another podcast about resisting demons and discerning spirits, but this is really and deliverance is the driving out of demons. That's what it is, and of course, is it is part of the arsenal or or part of the tools mm-hmm. that we believe that believe that uh, believers and certainly counselors should be using to help people. So. I guess to start off on a kind of a high level view, we want to share our philosophy about who needs deliverance. Who needs deliverance, Phyllis? Well, you know, that's a very simple answer. I think we all need deliverance, Don. We live here, and this is a place where we know that Satan has fallen in Revelation 12 with little time and great fury. And, you know, hey, if we're blood-bought, redeemed by the power of the Holy Spirit and accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then he's not going to get our soul. But you know what? A little bit further down in Revelation 12, it talks about how he wants our testimony and how he'll he'll release that onslaught of oppression against the saints of God to really hold them out of the fullness of their call. And so even from a standpoint of hmm, maybe I'm not being completely harassed, but I'm not getting... I'm not taking the borders of what God has asked me to do. I seem to be delayed or disappointed or hindered. Hindered, you know, even from that perspective, I think deliverance is 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 a must so that we are not, you know, I don't want to get to heaven one day and have God say, "Hey, you missed it." You know, exactly. you didn't do it. You didn't do your call. <laughs> well, that's it. And, you know, the Bible does say these devils are here to kill, steal and destroy. Yeah. And and we do as a, as just as a general rule. I can say quite simply that it is for everybody. It and we've ministered to people deliverance sometimes for people who have been, they would say Christians all their lives as far as they can remember and not been involved in a mm-hmm. lot of, mm-hmm. you know, what they, people would think of worldly sin and still right. had demonic torment because there are open doors we've there talked are. about and there's a bunch of them yes. as to how and why and and i think part of the, the thing where people get confused about is you know i heard somebody say and i think it's a good ter- term people if they don't haven't been taught about the demonic realm they learn how to cope or coexist right 
with their demons. Right. And uh, somebody heard, I heard the phrase that life is about demon management, mm -hmm. you know, and, and mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting phrase, but I think that's a fair word. People learn to cope and coexist with demonic strongholds. And, um, you know, people you know, go through counseling many times for a long period of time, right? Right, right. Uh, I, I tell people that all the time. I, we're, we're, we're a different type of counselors. A lot of people have used a lot of them and they get to us and they're like, what's going to be different? How is this going to change my life? And, you know, there's a joke that I don't hold their hands. I, I certainly don't throw Kleenex boxes at them like some of my friends have suggested. But, you know, I don't provide them with... We're not saying we don't have compassion, Yes, right? we have compassion, but, I, but we don't have like Hello Kitty Band-Aids where we're not going to just sit here and try to cover up the wound and pretend it's not there and soft soap it. I mean, you know, you want to get down to the heart of the reason of why it got there, why that, why you're being tormented or harassed or what's keeping you out of your call and get it out of the way and get moving on. Exactly. And we, and I think it, it's, you know, we do, we do counseling, obviously. Yes. We're Christian oh, yeah. counselors. Well, we do we're counseling. training that. <laughs> and we're training that we do it and we, and we're not trying to say one is, you know, that one doesn't need one or the other. I think for us and what we want to talk about here that many times the issue is timing, Yeah, you know, is people come in and, you know, should I get, do I need counseling first? Do I need deliverance first? And I guess our simple view is that if people are open and willing, they should go. We encourage people to consider going through deliverance first. All right. And that is because? Well, we, it's difficult to counsel a demon. I mean, you know, they're not usually, they don't, they're not usually very pliable with counseling. They'll try to keep the people from hearing the actual truth. They'll get in the way. They, they don't seem to uh, respond very nicely when it comes to, <laughs> to counseling. So you want to get them out of the way and then, and then you'll be able to speak in the counsel and the direction and, and the renewing of the mind that the person needs to move in in order to, to, to take back what the enemy has stolen. Yeah, and I think that's an important point to emphasize that, you know, sometimes people come in and, um, you know, we're, yes, we're deliverance ministry, but we do counseling. We try to assess every time on the first appointment or the first session, whether it's in the office or over the internet, or where people are at spiritually, what mm -hmm. is their background? What do they believe? And if we bring up the con, you know, the topic of spiritual warfare deliverance in there, they just kind of sit there quietly, their eyes glaze over. Then we know that's, that, yeah. may, that may not be the, the first and the best approach right, for people. Right. And so we, we have good tools and things we can, we can help people there with there. But, but once again, I think if people are open, and we'll get to some of the, the evidences of demonic strongholds and see sometimes that we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. But I think as a general rule, we would say if people are open and people come in and we in there, you know, if they find us from deliverance or they're open to it. And, and then, then we we believe from a timing standpoint, it is best to go through deliverance first. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I talk about a lot, too, is is, um, you know, people will actually say, well, I have somebody that I want to send to you, but you know, they really don't know anything about deliverance and I don't want them to be f afraid. And, and I'm like, well, I'll just send them because, you know, I think as counselors, we're trained to know when the person is ready or if they're not going to be ready, but we can plant seeds and open doors and really, you know, open good doors uh, to, to what the Lord can do in their life. And, and we're sensitive to that. So people need healing, counseling yeah we'll walk it out very gently at first we're never going to rush somebody yeah, we don't try to push people through deliverance no right? we don't push right exactly and that's it some people just are not ready and but i think you said something that very important it's worth highlighting our experiences and doing this a long time obviously that if people sometimes we get people in here who have been through counseling for years i mean mm -hmm. i've talked to people that had a, a couple just really just the other fast couple of days and they went to a marriage counselor for four years wow and it was like man Man, alive. I don't I don't have a four year program no. for people. I don't want to depend on me. And I you know, I just think, hey, let's do some glimpses, yes, do some counseling, but then you need know, to be part of us good healthy spiritual yeah. bible believing church but sure. but the bottom line on deliverance is, is you as we understand it the driving out of demons that if people are free from the demonic spirits then then if you like there's more room in their soul oh, yeah. if you like for the for the spirit of god to work and then their minds are clear right able, able to win the mind battles you talked about yeah and that's one of the things that i significantly remember after the deliverance that i went through was it was almost as if the holy spirit just stretched out on the inside of me and went <gasps> Oh, there's more room. And even after that, then 
I, my hunger increased for the word of God and, and to know more. And my mind was renewed and, you know, I became to realize who I was and I wasn't living in conforming to the patterns of the world. You know, I had a, an identity that was founded in Jesus Christ and that, and all of that was really after deliverance. Right. You had that knowledge and you had that there, but there's just something that's clear. I've, oh, especially yeah. I've heard that reds are redder and yeah. greens are greener. <laughs> yeah. Enter into worship. There's just a, a clarity there. And I yeah. think, you know, from, if you just think of the clutter, this, the strongholds are gone and those tormenting voices are gone and you're able to win the mm -hmm. mind battles mm -hmm. and focus in on the word and enter into worship. So that's, mm -hmm. that's part of the fruit out of it. And so I guess our view is, hey, go through deliverance first. And then, yes, many people do need counseling. Mm -hmm. And we do counseling. We're great believers in, in, in interesting counseling. But going through deliverance first is kind of, from a timing standpoint, is something we strongly encourage people to do. But once again, people will come in and they'll say, well, gee, you know, I don't know that much about deliverance, but do you think I need it? What are what are the indicators or what are the evidences, if you like? What's the proof or, for, you know, sometimes people will use that. How do you know if I have demons? And so what we've got now and want to talk about is what we call evidences mm -hmm. of demonic strongholds mm -hmm. and you know and that's typically what it is because you know it's there's not a test that we run people through you know and check on you know, questionnaire and comes out with things it's just you know there's some things that we look for and evidences or indicators of demonic strongholds and and i'd say one of the big ones that we talk about is is an is is an area of a person's life where they where they cannot get the victory right and that's a place where you know you're being driven like that same response just seems to be driven right out of you in situations where you can't control it and that i mean like with anger you know it's just that button that gets pushed and you go there and it, it takes over and i've heard people say it they just get completely out of control and they don't even know how to stop it but they recognize it because they recognize it as something that's been in their family and it's it's a pattern that they've come into agreement with and that spirit is there driving them with that that anger also same thing you know one of the things i was very affectionately aware of was fear mm. i mean fear was something that you know no matter how bold and how brave i would try to psych myself up to be i was afraid i was afraid of things of the dark i was afraid of failure i was very insecure about who i was you know all of those things did not line up with who i was meant to be but whenever i got into a situation i would cower and i would back up and so you know i didn't have any way of really controlling that those things just really drove me things like addictions or perversions people lust, that are pornography or yeah things pornography like. yep yep even lust lust of any kind lust for attention like you have to be approved of and needed and wanted or you're automatically automatically rejected and you're depressed if that's a pattern there's a stronghold there if that's if whatever it is that's painting your life that does not line up with the word of god it's a lie and you've tried i think it's important to emphasize we're not of the mindset there's not demons behind every problem right. in a person's life and you know and everything isn't a demon necessarily at work because we have our unrenewed uh, uh flesh. soul and our, mm. what we call our flesh but i think coming back and it's important to emphasize an area of a person's life one of the indicators where they cannot get the victory and that means hey i know this is a problem i right. have a problem with anger but i can't control it or same with the depression some people they really can't even put a finger necessarily on why they're depressed right. I mean, there's elements of sadness things will happen but people are just bound up right in depression and many times they, they can't even put a finger on it how or why so those we, we come back to areas of personal life where they cannot get the victory they try they do classes they try techniques you know um they do things they do the things uh get counsel mm -hmm. go to the pastor read books and say you know this is a problem but i i've never gotten the victory over this mm -hmm. or i've had it a long time those once again are what we would call those strongholds an area of your life where you cannot get the victory and those well, are had, evidences of that right i've had one many people that have come in and said i don't know where it started i just know that i've been dealing with it my whole life I've had it my whole right exactly. yeah and, and that's why sometimes we do the interview and you can go back and because you know we talk about spirits and demons just can't jump on a person there's yeah. entry points or open doors and sometimes right. when you know a person's background you can say wow maybe you know this may, may have been where you know mm -hmm. how that how and why that spirit have entered into you and so um, so the bondage is real that, and that, that, that these spirits, um, you know, are evidences, that's one evidence mm -hmm. of it. And a second one, and we kind of touched on it is, as we mentioned, people many times, if they come for deliverance, are they finding us? They have tried other things. They have been to the pastor, right? They've been to the altar for mm -hmm. prayer, mm -hmm. repeated prayer and mm -hmm. what, and, and what, you know, typically, um, they don't get any kind of, um, what we call lasting, right? 
fruit. It might be temporary, um, but there's nothing really that sustains and lasting. And we believe deliverance, you know, when it's done is robust. God can get free from a spirit. It's a matter of keeping that spirit out and you should see fruit. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, we talk about this a lot, you know, especially at the altar, because I think that's one of the places where, you know, hey, that's a that's a sanctified place. That's a place where I should be able to get free and go up on Sunday. And you can. Absolutely. God delivers a myriad of ways. But if there are open doors, and that's what we've talked about before, you're not going to, like you said, you're not going to see this, the fruit sustained because if those doors are still open and they walk out of the church, those spirits are going to come right back again. And so that's part of that repeated prayer. They just, it's kind of like in a cycle. So that's one of the reasons why we take people through, you know, the interview process to discern those doors. Uh, a lot of times they can't discern them on their own, you know, and it does take outside ears. I'm always amazed on when people come in and they tell you their story for an hour and then you have a clear picture of the cycle and the pattern that has been in their family from the very beginning. And, you know, I call it the same repeating play, but with different actors at different stages of their life. And then you, you, you mentioned that it's like, wow, there's been that spirit of death or whatever in their life all, all, all this time. And it's just been repeating with different people. And they look at you like, wow, all every time. Wow. I never thought about well, that. And you, you, we've heard it so many times as you do more deliverance is like anything you get, you get, you hear the same stories. Yes. Over, because people say the, de the demonic kingdom, they're not creative. They're not know? creative. They, they don't have to be creative because no. they have a pretty good set of tactics that work. So, but when you hear that and you understand, you see the demonic kingdom will work pretty consistently. Consistently right. in, in people's lives um, over and over again, because quite frankly, their methodologies, they work, they work pretty well. Well, that's good. I did just say that too this morning with one of my clients because she said, why, why am I having to go through this? And I said, well, you know what? Your story is unique, but the devil is not. So with women, you know, because that's pretty much my wheelhouse is it almost always starts with things like abandonment, rejection, then insecurity, and alienation. And so that's what the, the enemy loves to do that because he wants to build a distrust in the woman's heart in order for them to begin to harden their heart. When their heart hardens and there's unbelief, there's distrust, there's walls that go up and it blocks the whole loving nature of a woman, how we were created to be. And so, you know, all of that stuff has to come down, all the self-defending, all of the, all of the protection devices, everything that, that a woman would try to insulate themselves with in order for them to, to be free. And, and I think that's one of the worn out ones that the enemy uses over and over again with women because of the way they've been either handled by their parents or treated by their husbands or whatever it is that self-defending that gets in there really hardens their heart and keeps them out of that full freedom. And so those are all the areas where we can take a look at that. And, and like you said, know that, you know, we've heard it over and over and over again. So we understand um, that this is an agenda that the enemy uses unmask it and help that person get free. Exactly. Yep. That's, uh, it, it's important because there are these open doors as you understand those. And of course, you know, people do their homework and they get, God gives them revelation as they look back on their own, on their life oh, and yes. they get some insights. And so, so we've, we talked about that there are the, the uh, areas of a person's life where they can't get the victory. Maybe they've had repeated prayer right. and counsel. They've tried even fasting or reading the mm. word or declaring things. And, and for some people they, they've resorted to medications, yeah. you know, in our society, in the secular world, for a lot of the issues, emotional issues, people deal with um be it depression be it fear and anxiety that the you know which we believe there's spirits at the roots of these things that many times people will um have to they'll go to a medical professional and end up me on medications and typically um you know our approach with the people i very few people in, like them they don't enjoy yeah. being on them no they don't and, and you know, there are band-aids at best and, and please, we're not, you know, condemning or, you know, talking badly about people doing that. If you're hurt, if you're, you know, you've got problems, you, you go for help wherever you can. But sure. if there's spirits behind, if there's spirits behind these things, mm -hmm. then you really need deliverance from them. And we've seen people go through deliverance, you know, in conjunction with their doctors, get off of the medications, right? Well, I'll, I'll be the first one to go transparent on that one. I know when I walked in, I was on antidepressants. I'd been on them because I'd lost my mother. Things were un unhealthy in my life. And had gotten upside down and yeah my serotonin levels in my brain were like really 
low, 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 low. And so that was one of the first things they said, you know, was to go ahead and take these in. But you're right. As, as it didn't, it just, it didn't really, it kind of numbed me, made me feel less emotional. I guess that helped with some of the sleeping issues that I had. But, but, you know, after I went through deliverance, it was, it was easy. It was like, I, and it wasn't a case where the, where I said, oh, I've got to throw this out right away because I went through deliverance. I walked it out with the Lord and there was a time where I just recognized I didn't need it anymore. And I think that's the beauty of the way the Holy Spirit will walk you. So we will never tell you to dump your medications. No, we're not medic- We're not doctors. We don't no, do that. No. We, we don't ever tell people to do that. And no. We don't make people feel badly for being on them. No, because, because you know, some, sometimes they help. Them t- they help. They can get them stabilized. Right. But it's not, a, it's, it's not a not a lifetime cure. thing. It's not something that you really most have people to know hold that. on to. And most people know that at their core. I've right. Found, I think I can count on one hand with fingers left over. Some people say, no, I'm really happy. The medication, <laughs> I am just see myself being on that and happy with that. Yeah, and no, it's like no. for most people, they, they just recognize it because you know it doesn't bring them a cure and the side effects are you oh, know side effects, are always yeah. there so anyways those are and so that that's an indication so if you say hey to try the medications for these things we're doing these and they don't work that's those many times are evidences too the, but I've, I've, I've had like a lot of success stories with that as far as people being able to drop them and not take the medications anymore so that is exciting when you start to see people go back to their doctors and their doctors are all a dither you know that oh my gosh what do you mean you you know you're you're not taking your medication anymore and then test the thyroid test the test the the body for all the different things and then say wow you, you don't need it you you know you really are you're really old well that's it many times people go through deliverance they get free from the spirits yeah. that have been affecting the physical body yes. then the body that the organ is the yep. organs and the glands can come back into alignment mm-hmm. you know and that's the thing we lose sight of sometimes in deliverance that jesus called spirits out of people sometimes it was for healing yeah, I and think in the Bible called, about one third of them were, right? One third of the healings were for deliverance related. I'm not sure the number, but that sounds reasonable. I mean, one, the, one third I, of his ministry. That, yeah, <laughs> one third of his ministry, of course, was preaching healing and deliverance. But one of the women in scripture that he ministered to, it said, was crippled by a spirit of infirmity. Right. So she had a spirit, a physical issue with with the physical crippling, but delivered from. So we've seen that happen. Yep. And so... Um, but it, you know, person it just, you know, we ask people to stir up their faith for that. Believe that Jesus is your healer, your deliverer. Mm-hmm. So those are indicated many times the medications aren't successful, the depression right. and anxiety. And then, and then there's another group of people. Sometimes the evidences are pretty clear, you know, I mean, some, some of these things we've talked about being, can be subtle, but some are evident. I mean, people will say they were, they're fighting or arguing with uh. their husband and they'll see that person <laughs> will start, their eyes will change. They'll start uh. snarling. Uh. They'll start speaking and things or they'll, or their eyes have never seen their eyes eyes go red they've mm-hmm. seen i've looked or and they'll use words like i look in my husband's or my wife's eyes and say it wasn't them yeah it was somebody else yeah. so those are indicators too pretty those you know pretty um pretty strong indicators and those are indicators too that when they come in for deliverance their their deliverances are pretty strong as well right i mean a couple of times Often, in the last yes. few weeks you've had your hand on that door because they've gotten pretty loud <laughs> and those are the ones that come in saying you know i don't know i just don't feel like myself you know i feel like i do have all this other stuff that's going on inside my body and and when they get prayer those things go and some sometimes you know not not all the time praise god but once in a while you'll see a manifest during deliverance too well it does it, it happens we try to prepare people i'm not saying there's none but 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 we try to make you know believe as people prepare them they're, they're usually you know lesser oh yeah and they should be and you know and sometimes people and that uh, tied in with that is uh, you'll hear people when we when we talk to them the first time and ask them about issues in their life and they'll say words like it's not me it's like something in me mm-hmm. and they don't know what the it is mm-hmm. and for some i've seen people literally break down in tears mm-hmm. when we go through the teaching and say well based on what you're telling me and you know, these things that are happening i believe these are demonic spirits Mm -hmm. that's what it is it is demonic one or more demonic spirits because they know it's not them Mm -hmm. it's something in them yeah it's like a spirit of rage is a good example of that it's example exactly it just comes right out and it just takes right over and starts to scream and loses control and you know and and i think with rage that's a that's an indicator because you know you can have you can have anger but it's the one time you cross over into rage and you know that that spirit is there it, it happens more and more and it'll just it'll start taking over so it's not a one-time incident rage if you're recognizing it in you or 
someone you know, that's a real that's a real strong ruling spirit. And it will yes, and it, it's powerful and it gets fed. It'll want to get fed oh, over yeah. and over again. Right. These devils want to get fed, and so it's not a one hit wonder. No, and it wants to right, and they'll lay dormant for a while and they get fed. But mm-hmm. in, the, in some way, somehow, either on your own or self deliverance or somebody praying for you or some supernatural, you need to get delivered right. and set free from that spirit. So those are those are indicators too. And like I say, sometimes it's it's obvious, and people you know we can see. Sometimes you'll see it in church situations, you know, or in certain uh, where the spirit of God is, and there will be manifestations. You mm-hmm. know, demons will manifest oh, yeah. in the presence of yep. God, and so yep. those are pretty evidence too. And they can say, "Wow, that 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 person, you know, needs deliverance." So mm-hmm. those those are some of the indicators mm-hmm. as well. So. Mm-hmm. Um, those are kind of the things we kind of lay out for people and, um, in terms of answering the question, it's like, do you need deliverance? It's like, yes, everybody needs deliverance. Yeah. And I tell them we go through deliverance from time to time. It's not a one time, one shot deal Mm-mm. where you get it done in 1989 and you're good to go. Hey, so, we live here. So I think it's a, you know, it's part world. of keeping the vessel clean. Right. I call it temple maintenance. <laughs> no, I think that's it. Yeah, we keep the doors closed and we can. We reopen yeah. doors. Stuff happens. Sure. Life happens. Hey, and we, we can reopen here. doors. Yeah. And so we live in a fallen world. We're not in the world. Mm-hmm. We're not of the world, but we're in the world. And and the, these devils don't give up. They can, and we can through reopen doors. And so we just go through deliverance again. Yep. You know, and that's and that and that's okay. Yeah, there's no there's no failure in that. No, absolutely it's, not. It's so. good. It's good methodology. Well, any one or two things you'd want to emphasize for people listening to this in terms of what they should take away about from this uh, session on on d- deliverance ministry versus counseling Phyllis anything that you want to highlight well I just think you know it, my passion is that the devil has delayed most of us long enough with all this interference and so I think it's time if people haven't been seeing the freedom and they've not had sustainable freedom with the with what they've been doing then guess what it's probably not working so make a step me make a little step make a call do something but take back what the enemy has stolen because you know it's time for you to really walk in the fullness of your inheritance none of us know how long we have and i don't want to be like i said earlier the one that gets up to heaven and says and the lord says you know you never really walked in the fullness of everything i wanted you to do i would hate to hear that and so we need to do it i think for our next generation too, our children if you won't do it for yourself then do it for them i think it's important it is it is and we you know, we emphasize again that it is for everyone. You know, we encourage people if they're willing to go through deliverance first as early in the process as possible. And I, I would add this, and I would say almost a disclaimer. It's like a qualifier that I've experienced is that people going through a trauma, going through a traumatic event, right. if they're in the middle of a divorce and their emotions are raw. Mm-hmm. Many times they, you know, you can do deliverance, but you know, it's too easy when the devil's come back to reopen those doors, everything's too sensitive and, and they, and it's yeah. harder to stay free. So yeah. we're arm of the mindset. It's like the best time to go through deliverance is on the other side. Right of a trauma of some kind not while right. you're in the middle of it because it's just generally more effective because there is an element of having to walk it out sure. and there's an element of discerning and resisting the spirits so we try to come back to the house so mm-hmm. i think i'd like to emphasize that well we hope you've enjoyed this podcast and got some benefit out of it um we'd sure love to hear from you um we'd really much like to have you of course visit our website our anbcounseling.com website there's deliverance ministry.fm podcast is there we're on itunes if you release or rather re, uh, leave a review for us on itunes and there's a link there to show you how to do that we will um be happy to send you a link to get the f- a free downloadable copy of our deliverance ministry plain and simple manual if you'll leave a review for us i mean we love to get reviews it helps to build the visibility and so if you'll do that for us, we will we will do that for you. And there's details again on the website and how to do that. And finally, I'll tell you about a new resource that we have on the uh, A and B Academy dot com or Counseling Academy website. Um, we've had resources for a long time. We've turned out blogs, hundreds of blogs and um, PowerPoints and podcasts and videos, and they were all over the different places on our website. And what we've done is consolidate them on the A and B Academy dot com. Uh, website we're calling it the resource library you can get to it from the counseling website or the academy website you just look under resources and all you have to it's totally free we do ask you to sign up which you have to register to get to it but uh, you sign up for it um, and we'll send you an email updates when we release new content and we hope you'll find that useful and love to hear from you on that as well as any suggestions that you have for future podcasts we appreciate uh, you very much and we thank you for listening and may god bless you Thank you.